Hey friends, you're listening to Why This, a podcast where a couple of food scientists learn why people love the things they love. Today's topic, tiny food. Welcome to Why This, as always brought to you by Draft Lab. Draft Lab helps food and beverage producers improve the taste and quality of their products with best-in-class sensory software tools and training. Visit DraftLab.com to learn more or reach out to us on social media if you're interested in becoming a better taster. I'm your host, Lindsay Barr, with my co-host, Matt Conyer. And I think the first time I came across the world of uh, tiny food was the tiny hamster YouTube sensation that happened like back in like 2015 or something like that. The hamster ate a tiny little burrito, I think. And then there was like spaghetti and a birthday cake. And it just kind of built from there. So Matt hadn't seen this video, so I showed him uh, this morning. So Matt, what did you think of the the tiny burrito and the hamster? Yeah, I, I hadn't seen it before, so it was it was pretty funny. And But going into it, I thought I kind of understood what tiny food was because I thought it was in the name. But then after I saw that video, I kind of go into the wormhole of the internet and I start looking at more things and I had more questions. So uh, I think it's a good thing that we're going to be talking to our guests today. We have so many questions. It yes. seems like a really simple thing, but we're really excited to learn more about this this strange world. So our guest today is the owner and operator of Knockabout Burgers in Denver, Colorado, and the recipient of the 2018 Golden Toothpick Award and grand prize at the Small Foods Party and Competition in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Caitlin, I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for joining us. And I have to ask, what was the moment that you were first introduced into this tiny world? Thank you very much for having me. I, it's an honor to be a part of the Tiny Foods episode. <laughs> you know, I don't know exactly when Tiny Foods were introduced into my life. I think it could be the Tiny Foods competition. Um, my cousin lives out there and she's like, let's go check this. Let's check this thing out. Like, okay. And I was like, but let's not check it out. Let's enter into it. Let's go. Let's do it. If we're going to do it, let's do it. So we entered, it was just the two of us. Um, we made tiny s'mores um, and we brought a toaster to roast the tiny mallows that we had made. Um, and ever since, tiny foods have, have been a large part of my life. And it's, it's evolved into making tiny foods out of clay. Um, it's in, you know, it's bringing food, tiny foods into my life that I can that I don't have to eat them and it goes away. They can always be there. So, so you went from a regular food world and you found out about this and you just, you just joined a competition right off the bat. You were like, let's just go dive Jumped all the right way in. in. It was so intriguing and so exciting. You know, it was new to us. We had never been a part of this world other than like Lindsay had said, watching some YouTube videos. I love it. <laughs> So we asked you to come up with your top three reasons why people are into tiny foods, into this whole world. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So what's your first reason that people are into tiny food? Visually pleasing. I mean, that's like, for me, that's the number one. It's cute. You can't look at a tiny food and not say, aww. It's, <laughs> it's nearly impossible. And it brings a smile to my face. It brings a smile to everyone's face. Like, the happiest place on earth could be the small foods party in Baltimore. Can you describe the food that you made for the competition that you won in 2018? So we went with our name was Panda Compressed. Um, we went on a, a take of American Chinese takeout food. So we made takeout containers about an inch, maybe, um, mm. printed them, folded them, had the little handle. Um, and then inside of it, we had General Sow's chicken. Um, we had a mug of oolong tea. Um, and we had tiny egg rolls about the size of maybe your pointer finger, fingernail. And then fortune <laughs> cookies. Um, fortune cookies were smaller than all of any fingernail on my fingers. And it was comical in that we 
brought a magnifying glass to read the fortunes. However, even with the magnifying glass, it was hard for us to read. But there was this like 12 year old roaming the show and she was able to read it just fine. That is so good. Uh, okay, so when you say you're making the, the takeout, the the actual takeout container is not edible. It's like actual paper. Is it like the Correct. same materials? Okay. So yep. for someone to eat it, they have to like tiny go in and eat it, With right? chopsticks, which were two, the ends of two toothpicks. <laughs> that is, that's wild. <laughs> okay. So do you cook like... Do you cook a full chicken and then cut the chicken into tiny little chicken pieces? Or do you just cook the tiny chicken? So for that, we cut the chicken first and then we cooked tiny chicken. But we had a mixture. We allowed it to slide because we then, you know, we did create mini egg rolls. It wasn't just like cut up small pieces. And so there was kind of a mix of Mm -hmm. food being cut small enough to, to make it mini you know, like mm-hmm. broccoli. It did kind of look like actual tiny broccoli because, you know, you can get the, the florets and a stem to make it to make it fit. So that's a fine line um, mm-hmm. in the tiny food world. Some people might not want to cross it and some people might be okay with it. Is is flavor a part of this when they're judging it or is, is that like a part of the competition? Yeah, definitely. The flavor is for sure a part of it. And so you can't just toss out some unsalted, unseasoned general sauce. It's right. gotta it's gotta have that that flavor. Do you do you make it big and season it big or do you season it tiny too? Like how does that work? Season it tiny. So do you make like a salt extract or something? Because like I would imagine that a flake of salt could totally bring it out of balance yeah no kosher yeah. salt here right <laughs> yeah totally um no we just that that's a great question i don't think we ever like ground our salt or anything or like brought it down to a simple syrup or um no it was just very careful and a couple because we we're cooking for the chicken we cooked it all at once we cut it up and it was all tiny but we still had you know we were making um enough to serve three to 400 people. So we still had an incredible amount of food to make in tiny form. So I had a bit of a record scratch moment there. I didn't realize, I thought you would make like a showpiece of tiny food. I didn't realize you were feeding everybody tiny yeah. food. So you have, you're have you making hundreds of these just nonstop. Yeah, and um, it's basically like, you know, I, I live in Colorado. This was out in, out in Baltimore. And so it's like a two day push where we just don't sleep, go crazy and make tiny things. When, when you pack it all up, does it fit into a really small suitcase? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's like a Tupperware. <laughs> yeah, well, one, one, one Tupperware, just throw it in the fridge and then bring it. Okay. And we're good. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. So we we have um, reason number one. Can you go for reason number two? Yes. So one, cute dopamine release for me and the people eating it. Like just you can't not look at it and say, oh. And then two, it quiets my brain. Um, everything around me comes silent. And then mm-hmm. three is it's challenging. Um to create it and it requires patience. So basically it's an outlet for my crazy. Like <laughs> I can let all the small things and the, the things that maybe I would sometimes um, want to fix in my everyday life. Yeah, I can let that go because I can put all that energy into creating tiny things. So for people who want to get into this, what do you think is the easiest thing to make? Is a burrito really the easiest thing? Or, I mean, the 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 Chinese chicken bowl seems very technical. Well, no. So the, both of those things aren't there. That That's the like fine line of like creating tiny food or cutting up food to be tiny. And both of those dishes are cutting up tiny food 
to be to make a tiny dish. So that's like entry level. And then next level is actually like creating the mini fortune cookie or creating, you know, we when we did s'mores, we didn't cut up small graham crackers. We made small itty bitty graham crackers. So that's like level two is like actually making the item small versus cutting up a big item to become small. What was someone else's tiny food dish that you saw and you were like, whoa, that's kind of blew you away. That's that's next level. I wish I thought of that. So the first year we went, it was like, whoa, we need more than the two of us to win this because the team directly next to us, um, they were cooking eggs on site with they had a miniature cast iron stove and they would use a syringe to syringe out the egg on a miniature um cast iron pan so cook the egg and then like the next station was to cook a mini um, pancake and then they had like a tree that you could pump a little pump of syrup. That was pretty, that was like our first entry into like how in depth this could really become. And we had s'mores and that was it. We were like, oh gosh, we have so far to come. Um, but we got there. The next year. <laughs> yeah. 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 One, one year. <laughs> one year later. <laughs> one year later. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was pretty awesome. So did they use a little hot plate or did they use like a one little flame for the stove? One, they used a, um, a tea light underneath. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, which I guess is kind of a bonfire in the, t- in the tiny world yeah, in some exactly. ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, on that note, um, Caitlin, this was really fun. I... <laughs> I had so much fun learning about this world. I'm super curious to stay involved. I really want to go to the competition. Again, maybe you'll recruit me to be on your team. Um, So where can we learn more about you, learn more more about Knockabout or the tiny foods world? Yeah, so Knockabout Burgers, you can check out our Instagram. Our handle is Knockabout Burgers. um, And we are located inside Avanti which is a food hall in Denver. Um, We're open seven days a week, slinging burgers, slinging fried chicken, salads, sandwiches. Um, And really quick, I know we're closing up the show, but I tried to get a tiny milkshake in, um, in the mix. But it's still, I shouldn't say tried. I'm still working on getting, it's like this big. It's just the Sourcing is difficult. Pricing is difficult. All of it. People, I think, might be surprised when they order a milkshake and they get one this big. <laughs> um, Small foods, big hearts, high prices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's you still get like a $8. drop of ice cream. One drop of ice cream. <laughs> Here you go. I think some people appreciate it, but maybe not the masses. Um, yeah. So knock about burgers. Um, great. We actually won Reader's Choice Best uh, Burger in Denver this last year, or this year, 2023. Um, so definitely come check us out. Amazing. <laughs> I definitely want a regular size burger and a tiny little milkshake. <laughs> I would be so overjoyed. If you order a regular milkshake and somebody hands you that, It's oh that's God. the funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean, that's God. all the content that you need for your Instagram. So um, yeah, I, I think you should do it. And, and anybody who's in the sourcing world, let's find Caitlin some tiny little straws. Uh, <laughs> all right. So thank you again for coming on the podcast. This was this was a lot of fun. Why This is produced by the team at Draft Lab, where we help companies demystify consumer experiences through flavor analysis. To learn more, reach out through our website and, of course, like, subscribe, do all of those things that you would normally do to stay in the loop. Thanks for being here.
you're a grumpy old person if you don't like to see tiny things. 